with mourning and lament I send you forth, but God will give you back to me with enduring gladness and joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the martyrs, Nicholas Prick and companions. It was in the 16th century in England that these group of Franciscans laid down their life for Christ. They were arrested and hung simply because they believed in the one true Catholic Church. Let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You stand at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of the Father, you give victory to your holy martyrs, Nicholas and companions, and adore them with the crown of eternal life. Imitating their constancy, may we also attain with them to eternal glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, when Israel was a child, I loved him. Out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the farther they went from me, sacrificing to the Baals and burning incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk, who took them with, my, with human cords, with bands of love. I fostered them like one who raises an infant to his cheeks. Yet, though I stooped to feed my child, they did not know that I was their healer. My heart is overwhelmed. My pity is stirred. I will not give vent to my blazing anger. I will not destroy Ephraim again. For I am God and not man the Holy One present among you. I will not let the flames consume you. The word of the Lord. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth, rouse your power. Let us see your face, Lord and we shall be saved. Once again, the Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, as you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, 
drive out demons. Without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts, no sack for the journey, or a second tunic, or sandals, or a walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to you, or to your words, Go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. It is so hot in here, my glasses are sliding off my face. And I'm going to mess this up again. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's figure out here. We want that. <laughs> I thought technology is supposed to make our lives easier. So in today's gospel, we have the Lord sending the apostles out to the lost sheep of Israel. So they're going forth only to preach to the people, the Jewish people. First mission, just the Jews. And it's interesting, because he gives them power and authority. They have the authority and the power to cure the sick, to raise the dead. Think about that. Jesus took his power to raise the dead and gave it to the apostles. He took his power to cleanse lepers and gave it to the apostles. He took his authority to drive out demons and gave it to the apostles. They're sent forth to proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, i.e. the Messiah has come, repent and believe in the gospel, to cure the sick, so healing, giving life to the dead, and to drive out demons. Now we can say at baptism, every one of these things happens. Our souls which were wounded by original sin, that weakened will, that darkened intellect, our souls are given the gifts of wisdom, knowledge, counsel, understanding. To our weakness, we're given fortitude and we're given that strength to be able to truly maintain our relationship with God through fear of the Lord and piety. So the mission of the church, to heal, to raise, and to drive out demons hasn't stopped. Did you ever pay attention at the baptism when we have the rite of exorcism? Yes, at every baptism we do a little exorcism over the baby. Is the baby possessed? No. Hope not. The way they cry, sometimes you think so. Sometimes those diapers truly make you think they're possessed with something. But the exorcism is because they were once bat born under the reign of sin. And so as they are delivered into the kingdom of God, we pray the prayer of exorcism as the deliverance from evil into the life of grace. And they go truly from death being in the state of original sin to being in the life of Christ. That resurrection, that spiritual resurrection from death in original sin to the life of the state of grace. So the mission of the church, which was first given to the apostles, the authority to heal, the authority to drive out demons, the authority to raise from the dead, continues in the mission of every priest in the sacraments. Now, listen to this next line. He tells them, without cost you have received, without cost you are to give. 
Yeah, if only that was still the case, right? <laughs> We're not supposed to charge for the gospel. And I don't charge you for the gospel. Any collection we get here goes to the maintenance of the church and the survival of the priest. Trust me, check the salary. It's survival. <laughs> But truly, we are to be total self-gift because it's not just a job. The role of the priesthood, as the role of the bishop, the role of the apostles, is not a job or an occupation. It is a life, a self-gifted life of love to the church. And one gives without asking for repayment. One gives because one loves, not expecting anything in return, but giving because one loves Christ, one loves the church, one loves souls, every soul, the greatest saint in the parish and the worst sinner in the parish. And the worst sinner in the parish is always the priest, so. Soul, the love of all, love of Christ. The love of souls, the love of the church. So without cost, he's teaching them to love, to give without expecting repayment, to be like a mother who gives and gives and gives until she has nothing left to give. Every priest must be after that image of a mother who gives until there's nothing left to give. Then check this out. He says, don't take gold nor silver or copper for your belts. No money. He sends them out where they can't buy anything for themselves. They can't buy food. They can't pay for a hotel room. They can't buy clothes. They have nothing. He takes all their, all their wallets. It's like, drop your wallets. I'm sending you out. Uh, Lord, don't you think I need my wallet? Nah. Go without the wallet. Why? Because they also need to learn trust. Not only do the apostles need to learn that they need to trust God, they need to learn that God is trustworthy, that God loves them so much that he will provide their shelter, he will provide their food, he will provide their clothing, just as he said he would at the Sermon on the Mount. They're sent out in trust. And that becomes part of their, comp their proclamation. As they go forth, they're proclaiming the kingdom of God is at hand. God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. We have nothing to worry about. And we trust God so much that we don't have any money with us. We let him depend to take care of us. So going out in poverty is part of their proclamation of the love of God and trust in God that God is trustworthy. Now they're not allowed a second tunic, he says here. One tunic, that's it. No second tunic. They have to trust that their clothes will not wear out, that God will keep them clothed. And check this one out. No sandals. The apostles have to go out barefoot. That's weird. Why wouldn't God give them sandals? Well, if we look at the Old Testament, what do we find whenever someone encounters God? Let's go back to Moses. What did God tell Moses when he saw the burning bush? He said, remove the sandals from your feet. The ground in which you now stand is holy. So while the apostles are going out and proclaiming the kingdom of God is at hand, they're going barefoot. In other words, they're proclaiming that the earth is now holy because God stands upon the earth. And not only is it holy because God stands upon it, but it'll become even more sacred when God spills his blood upon the earth. When the earth will drink the very blood of God on Calvary. So they're going forth barefoot was a proclamation that the world is now a holy place because God himself is walking upon the earth in human form. And then he tells them, take no walking stick. Okay, I don't need a walking stick. Unless there's a wild animal, then I need a walking stick. <laughs> right? Kind of wipe that walking stick for a wild dog, wild hog, 
Wild Crow, Smack a Spider, a Scorpion. Kinda need that walking stick. You notice mine by the back door of the rectory? Got that walking stick. Should I have it? Lord said, don't take it. Why? God is your defense. God is your walking stick. Lean on him. Depend on him. Trust in him. Let him be your defense. He will protect you. Don't trust in yourself or your walking stick. Trust in the powerful, mighty hand of God. Now I've been preaching nine minutes, so uh, better cut it off here and get to this other half some other time. But just today, think about this. When the apostles are sent forth, it's so that they can tell us something. Jesus wants to tell us something. In the behavior of the apostles, it's a prophetic mission, a prophetic message that God has delivered us from the evil of sin, the sickness of sin. God has raised us from the death of sin and has given us sanctifying life. He has driven evil from us. God will provide for all of our needs. We have nothing to fear. Look at the birds of the air, look at the flowers of the field. God, God will be our shield and our protection. All we need to do is trust. And why can we trust in him? Because he has proven that he is trustworthy. He has walked upon this earth. He has shed his blood upon this earth. He has been buried in the very dirt of this earth. And from this earth he rose triumphantly over death and sin and restored us to grace. He's trustworthy. As the beautiful little saying says, on the bottom of the divine mercy image, Jesus, I trust in you. May God bless you and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the gifts we bring to celebrate the feast of your martyrs. May this sacrifice free us from sin and make our service pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is to the right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Nicholas Prick and companions, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear use witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mischief of faith, we proclaim your death, confess your resurrection, till you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We are given over to death for Jesus, that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our dying flesh. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have been nourished by the body and blood of your Son. Inflame us with the same burning love that led your holy martyrs, Nicholas and companions, to offer their lives as a holocaust through Christ our Lord. Amen. I watched a very interesting uh, video this morning. Um, it was a priest who uh, met the president and gave the President Trump a statue of Our Lady of Fatima, to which he said, can I keep this? And supposedly the statue of Our Lady of Fatima is now in the Oval Office. Also the priest said that he was asked to do an exorcism over the White House, invited. And so three years ago, they did actually exorcisms over the White House, in the White House, blessed it because Melania refused to move in until it was blessed and had been exercised because there was some creepy things in there, she said. <laughs> so, interesting, huh? Just a little, I saw that, I was watching that with this priest and some other things this morning, going like, hmm, I wonder if our country needs an exorcism. <laughs> Maybe it does. Uh, on July 27th is the feast, 27th, 26th, 27th, I think, the feast of St. James. Uh, a week from Saturday is his feast day. So, uh, two weeks from Saturday. So starting next week, I believe it's gonna be on the 16th, the Feast of Our Lady Mount Carmel. For nine nights straight, I'm going to have adoration and rosary, praying for the end of the pandemic, praying for our parish, praying for our world, a conversion of our world and peace in our streets. So we'll have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, rosary, some quiet time, prayers to St. James, Litany of Our Lady, and benediction. And we'll do that at six o'clock, starting next, on the sixth, next Thursday the 16th, and ending on the Friday before the Feast of St. James, and that Saturday will be St. James Feast Day Mass at 8 a.m. So I'm gonna add some stuff in just for those nine days. I'm gonna invite the whole parish, and anybody wants to come, keep your social distancing, do what you're supposed to do for the pandemic, plenty of room in the church, and we're going to pray to Our Lady uh, to end this pandemic, to build up our parish, to drive out this evil from our land. And we're gonna to pray to St. James, the great evangelist who traveled all the way to Spain from Jerusalem to baptize souls, hence all his little shells. Because he was baptizing everybody. Need a lot of shells, I guess. And we're gonna invite him to help us to be evangelists that we may become true preachers of the gospel in this world. So, just some upcoming events. So as we get back into uh, phase three here in Massachusetts, uh, I'm going into fourth gear. So here we go again. Let's see what wall I bang into next, but I'll just plow through that one too. Here we go. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Say, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.